One of life's paradoxes is water related. Water as a source of life to many organisms is also a source of death and untold misery to many alive. Many living organisms gravitate towards water bodies to sustain their living. Here also, many find their death and nemesis. There are countless numbers of agents of death, such as disease vectors that lurk in water bodies, or nature themselves for their innate assignment. One of such diseases is onchocerciasis, also commonly known as river blindness. River blindness is a disease that is found in the fertile river valleys of West Africa. And the insects transmitting the diseases, this disease, are commonly called black flies. They have a scientific name called uh, Simulium damnosum. It's a complex of species. But then, these flies transmit worms that are called Onchoceca volvulus. Now then, it is the young ones that are produced by the matured adult worms that lives under the skin and the most severe of the form of the disease is blindness. The Volta Basin occupies about 45% of Ghana's landmass. This fertile landmass is bathed by rich alluvial soil deposits from the Volta River and its tributaries. Once upon a time, this basin was deserted, allegedly due to blindness unleashed on some humans. Little was then known about the link between the incidence of blindness and the presence of the little black flies in the basin. This is a disease which was controlled by killing the vector Simulium damnosum black flies using insecticide treatments in the Onchocercasis control program which was running from 1974 to 2002. And during the course of that program, it was discovered that there was also a drug called ivermectin, which could kill the developing microfilariae within the body. And so there was a two-pronged uh, attack against the disease. Lately, it is becoming clearer that the dissertation was rather due to the fear of blindness caused by a parasitic worm resulting from the biting of the black flies that swam themselves into the communities during early and late hours of daytimes. Climate change in the world's environment seems to be having adverse impact on the onslaught of the flies onto the communities. In the periods to come, with climate change, what will happen to uh, the communities living in these uh, areas? which have been successfully controlled by the Oscars Control Program. This phenomenon generated a lot of international interest during the 1970s, the latest of which is the Canadian IDRC EcoHealth Program. The EcoHealth Program is an example of a bilateral funding arrangement that brings together scientists and local communities to study the possible impact of climate change on the incidence of onchocerciasis in the Volta Basin of Ghana and West Africa with a view to providing beneficial behavioral changes to mitigate this emerging threat to their lives. EcoHealth approach involves research in diseases which addresses the interactions between the environment and socio-economic activities uh, to better understand, prevent and control the spread of disease while considering the importance of livelihoods, gender and social inequities in developing any solutions. 
Onchocerciasis, commonly referred to as river blindness, is brought about by the biting of some black fly insect that predominantly breed in areas of fast-flowing rivers, such as in this case, the savannah areas of the Volta Basin of Ghana and West Africa. Part of the life cycle of such an insect is completed in these areas of fast-flowing rivers where the larva of the insect is able to clinch itself onto rocks or foliage in the riverbed to take advantage of the rich oxygenated waters in these fast-flowing sections of the rivers to feed themselves. They prefer the fast-flowing river because of the fact that they are, they are filter-feeded. So they are able, when it's, flat, when it's flowing very fast, they will be able to get a lot of food to eat. They are filter-feeded, they feed like this. In fact, that's how they have some components of the fly called the cephalic fan. And that's how they used to feed like this. So you find them feeding like this. So they take the food and then they take it to their mouth. So that's how they feed. Now, so because of that, they need water that is flowing very fast in order for them to get the adequate food that they need. Other parts of this life cycle are completed in humans, where most of the damage occurs as when seeking blood from somebody the insect often transmits a parasitic worm called Onchocicra vulvulus that lives under the skin and eventually causes blindness in some victims. You find a black fly, it will bite somebody and that body must be some of them, some of the people they bite, they have the disease, some of the people they bite, they don't have the disease. But what happens is that when he bites somebody that have the disease, it just takes some of the baby parasite. It takes some of the baby parasite. The baby parasite will go through the system of the fly for about one week. For after about a week, they come to the head. So if they come to the head and then they bite another person, then they are going to transfer the parasite that they have taken from Mr. A. That has come to the head. Then he, when he bites another person, then he's going to give the parasite to the second person. However, it is not only the disease, but also the fear of the biting and the actual biting from this insect, which is now realized to be the source of the dire nuisance that displays many a human population from such areas along the Volta Basin. It has been established that the insects have always got the upper hand from such a melee and displays the inhabitants from the basin. Sometimes it is really very uncomfortable. I've had the occasion of uh, visiting some of my communities uh, and you get there and it is, it's really terrible. If you are not in long sleeves or in the trousers, your whole body is covered with the flies and sometimes before you leave the place you find a lot of you know, noodles on your skin. Poverty, disease, scholar, and deprivation have become the hallmark of this attack from the insect as the fear of the biting and the biting have adversely impacted on productivity in the basin. This incident of black flies attack on humans is limiting the human population's productivity in their communities. Farming activities that have been the mainstay of the local communities have either been abandoned or disrupted. At the peak of the season, people fear to even go to the farm. You can't bend down, you can't do anything. The flies are coming in their drones. They are coming in their numbers. You get bites all over. And so, at that time, people fear to go to farm. And our people are predominantly peasant farmers. And if you cannot go to farm at the peak of the farming season, definitely it will affect economic activities. Schooling activities have also fallen victim of the insect's invasion. School pupils are unable to concentrate on their studies due to the onslaught of the insect invasion. Sometimes, 
the educational activities in this school's curriculum have been truncated due to the continuous barrage from the insects. In another vein, many an employee has failed or refused to take up employment positions in such areas, also making productivity the casualty of this invasion. Such areas have also been rendered no-go areas as stigmatization that is fueled by travelers' tales. It's not allowed. Say a female teacher be share trouser about class and answer baby. But because of the uncle flight, no say the monkey can no be goofy. No when them ni na ye moja be wa kwa kwa wa. But before now be na uhu ti moja. Into a man by force ye share trouser at the bus school. The fly invasion is becoming more serious. Uh, sometimes we allow our health workers to wear trousers and long sleeves. Otherwise, they can't provide services. And they cannot even sit outside to converse, even in the day or in the night. Yet, someone here, Basu Beneno, not high and Kakra. If we say, now, a maybe at the same more and getting it to be our ha or more a sea honam, a motor, be sea, and oh, honam, so no more count, or more coward, me, my way, if ra. I do such as a moon swimming in the other day. Tina, I quite say, yet, someone here, Bahasino, not a high. Ampa, you do too much. Am I a buy? You buy and so now, so now you just follow and no so because of sa a moana a waha ninti. You just be a ba be who says a situation a waha now we call school attendance drops because people now fear to go to school. Everybody want to be indoors, and so a number of people then people don't want to go to school. And the most critical part of it is. Refusal of staff to be posted to the district, and we have a lot of uh, facility without the required staff. For example, the entire district has no more than ten midwives, and over half of them are here. So you see, in the hospital here, one midwife can work for over 24 hours, and we have only two midwives in the other sub districts. People are refusing posting to the district because of Uncle Fly. Indeed, uh, because of uh, the presence of this onco flies, there are a lot of our health workers who really refuse flatly to report to stations that they are posted to. Especially if you look at uh, areas that are just along the uh, river uh, basin. Recently, the assembly constructed a very beautiful chief compound at Chache, which is just at the, 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 the river bank. You know, we have a lot of population there. The nearest clinic to that uh, community is about uh, 22 kilometers away. And you can imagine pregnant women being put on bicycles to travel all along the route to the nearest community, which is called Mandare, to access uh, health care. So I thought it wise to I mean, convince the assembly to put up a chip compound. For almost one and a half years now, that building is standing there, even though the assembly has put all the necessary furniture to make you know, the health workers comfortable. They haven't still reported. The idea that blindness can be influenced by changes in the environment, likewise, that the biting nuisance of the flies will uh, reduce productivity of farmers, of workers working along the rivers, river banks, means that when the environment or climate changes in such a manner that is going to negatively impact on the people, then we must look for solutions so that we clear with the engagement of the communities we can implement these uh, recommendations or options for, to mitigate against the effects of uh, uh, blindness and the biting users. Over the years, various measures have been deployed to mitigate the incidence of blindness and the nuisance biting along the Volta Basin. In the 1970s and to 2001, aerial spraying on the black flies was conducted when helicopters or fixed-wing aircraft were employed to spray insecticides along the rivers 
to destroy the breeding grounds of the black flies. This exercise saw the black flies population reduced, albeit reimagined, as the effect of the spraying wore off. In this case, a drug called Evermectin is being mass distributed periodically to the local communities to mitigate the possibility of river blindness. This method of disease control is reported to have chalked some success. <laughs> Ghana, for example, is taking care of its uh, uh, the control program for this disease by solely giving drugs ivermectin. It has its problems because the coverage rates are not that high most of the time. And therefore, we have problems there. The blindness aspect of this problem seems to have abated. However, the drug distribution strategy is having its own challenges. There is a complaint of irregular supply of the drugs to the victims due to unavailability of the drug itself and the lack of motivation for the drug distributors. Some of the victims themselves are dodging the mass drug administration for the fear of some perceived side effects that are associated with the drug. Our community members who are along the Mota River, mostly uh, with all apologies, are the fishermen, uh, the Batwa or every community. And uh, sometimes because of the attendant uh, cold, you know, from the river, you know, they are inclined to go in for some strong alcoholic beverages. And you know the drug is uh, one type that uh, when you are on it, you are not allowed to take alcohol. Otherwise, it neutralizes the uh, potency of the drug. And so some of them, yes, they take the drugs, they keep it aside and go ahead to blow their, their alcoholic uh, beverages. And so at the end of the day, before they are taken, you know, uh, before they get aware, uh, the, the signs of the disease begin to show up. There is a traditional method of preventing the insect biting, of producing smoke fires next to human activities to stop insects from biting in the first place. Another method is to smear human bodies with locally prepared or generic insect repellents. The Echo Health Project is investigating the impact of climate change on the incidence of onchocerciasis in the basin and report on possible mitigating solutions to the local communities of the basin. On this mission, scientists, development economists and developmental communications experts are engaging local community stakeholders to learn from the communities the nature of the looming challenges posed by climate change and provide mitigating solutions to this emerging threat from the small black flies that is exacerbating the incident of the disease. In the periods to come with climate change, what will happen to uh, the communities living in these uh, areas? Climate change is perceived to be impacting adversely on the disease. The main factors of climate here are rainfall, atmospheric and fresh water temperatures. We expect that the, the heat that is building up will create very hot and sunny conditions. The increases in temperature is also going to create very severe conditions like droughts, floods, storms and uh, it's likely also that we are going to have more climate induced diseases. Atmospheric and freshwater temperatures are known to have increased by about 1 degree Celsius over the last 30 years. 
During this period, the amount of rainfall has also increased by about 2%, albeit in a sporadic way that has changed the pattern of rainfall to the extent that there is now an even interchange between the traditional dry and wet seasons all year round. The increase in rainfall has also increased the flow rate of rivers as well, which have directly influenced the breeding rate of the black flies. The changes in climate patterns have obvious impact on the disease onchocerciasis, especially as temperatures are likely to increase by at least 2 degrees Celsius and rainfall will become even more erratic with more severe storms over the next 20 years. Climate change is going to affect fly numbers significantly because first, the developmental time of the black flies are going to decrease. Secondly, the rainfall is going to increase and we know that rainfall has a direct relationship with the river flow or discharge of the river, which also have significant impact on the breeding size that is created for black fly development. So you're going to have a sustained breeding site for the development. I'm standing here at the construction site of the Bui Dam, and you can see behind me the lake. Fortunately, creation of a lake will inundate or flood or cover the breeding site, which means that the disease, the flies, will not have a suitable place to breed. But downstream of the river, as a result of the construction, you have the rocky beds of the rivers exposed because of control flow from the dam. And that will have two possible consequences. Either it creates more breeding habitats, or rather, you know, very little water will flow, so there will be that many. You know. Either way, we need to investigate and find out and advise the communities that will be living in these endemic areas. The various scientists, economists and communications experts are engaging the local communities to understand the nature of the disease and its impact on the local economy and produce an outcome that could mitigate this impact of climate change on the disease in the spirit of eco-health practices. This project is a consortium of aspects that covers the sciences, basic sciences, applied sciences, uh, social sciences, economic uh, aspects of it, and developmental, uh, what we call the developmental economics, as a way of ensuring that uh, we come up with a comprehensive uh, product that is sustainable and can easily be handled by the communities in endemic areas. In addition to the impact of climate change on onchocerciasis, the communities confirm increasing attacks from mosquitoes with the consequence of malaria. If you look at health-wise, these days, it seems things are changing. Places were so busy that we get this onco and then the uh, mosquitoes. But when this onco came in, people were educating us on how to keep our environment clean and spraying of that area have also come in to help us. But our main problems are malaria and this onco. The new emerging rainfall pattern associated with climate change is characterized by a bout of heavy rain downpours followed by dryness of river beds producing puddles of water bodies that are conducive for the breeding of mosquitoes. The increase in humidity associated with sudden rainfalls and dryness is aiding the multiplication of mosquitoes and other insects that bring diseases and misery onto communities. Scientists of the EcoHealth project are vigorously working in the laboratories and in the water bodies to study the breeding habits and life cycle of the black flies and the climate impact on the disease. The economists are working in the communities to learn about the economic impact of the manifestations of the disease in the communities. The communications experts are also in the communities doing their needs assessment 
communicating the outcomes of the scientific study, documenting the various aspects of the project, and gauging feedback on the messages of behavioral changes from the communities. Another looming challenge to the Echo Health project is the resistance to control measures. The Onchocerciasis parasite could be developing resistance to the drug Evermectin. To this end, the Noguchi Memorial Institute of Medical Research, University of Ghana, in collaboration with the University of Greenwich in England, have developed a capacity building program to mitigate this possible threat to the Onchocerciasis control program. This is for the scientist to stay ahead in the resistance game being played by the black flies population. That there were some problems with this drug insofar as in some parts of Ghana uh, the disease has not been eliminated and there are still people with the disease and in some communities up to a third of them may still be infected. And so one of the problems about how to control the disease in the future is to establish exactly where this resistance is occurring, if that's really what it is. It's technically called suboptimal responses because the, the worms do not um, respond as you would expect them to when given a particular dosage. The use of local radio programs to discuss the disease and its impact on local communities is being encouraged. Scientists, weather experts, health workers, opinion leaders, etc. join in radio studio environment to discuss the impact of climate change on the incident of onchocerciasis. These discussions include telephone callers and others who could be listening into the program on their radio sets from their homes, farms and other places. This is one such a communication channel that could be employed to effectively propagate the outcomes of the Echo Health project to the communities for beneficial behavioral changes that could mitigate the incident of climate change on the disease. Other communication objectives could include the use of drama played by local actors and shown as video via mobile cinema vans throughout the communities. <laughs> Mobile telephones could play a useful role in disseminating information to the communities, which are mainly pockets of sparsely and dispersed settlements. The patronage of mobile telephony communication is quite strong in Ghana. Programs on the disease, such as warnings on the periods of insect biting and behavior change messages could be developed and streamed to targeted recipients across the basin. This strategy is worth exploring as it could enhance the use of technology to aid in the control of the disease and new signs of black fly biting along the basin. The Echo Health project also craves acceptance of the local communities on the outcomes of their project. Workshops are part of the project's communication objectives to bring all the stakeholders together under one roof to share knowledge, experience and outcomes of the project. The scientists and economists provide knowledge on the project to a cross-section of stakeholders and to discuss the outcome of the study to the communities. The community's opinion leaders, health workers, weather experts and drug distributors in turn provide their knowledge and experience of dealing with the disease in the communities. The theme for, of this workshop is adapting to effects of climate change on oncocercosis. I strongly believe that the research team will not have come to organize this workshop if their research efforts had not yielded any result. The climate change is associated with negative health implications. One of such health challenges is the climate on onchocerciasis. The workshop in general is one of such opportunities for the project to gain acceptance on the outcomes of the project. <laughs> this water-related life's paradox on living organisms from the ecological divide of land and water that continues to bubble along the basin is in a long haul so long as the thriving conditions for the black flies population continue to exist along the Volta basin. In the meantime, 
the victims of this challenge from climate change and Uncle Sakaisis still remain the local communities along the affected areas of the basin where poverty, deprivation and disease continue to be the hallmark of this attack from the black flies. The eco-health approach to mitigate the impact of climate change on Uncle's archives could provide the panacea to this challenge to the affected local communities along the Volta Basin of Ghana in particular and West Africa in general. From the work we've done so far, we think that the next 50 years or so we will experience a period of dryness. What are the impact that is going to have in the communities? How do we engage the communities in ensuring that um, come environmental changes, come climate changes, what would they have to do to achieve sustainable control of the disease, ameliorate their uh, livelihood? Uh, what mitigation factors should they be engaged in so as to um, uh, not to affect their food security, their livelihoods and all.